In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. What a glorious day for you as a couple, but also for the church, as we come to celebrate fidelity, your union with each other after all these years. I'm told that we have nearly 7,000 years of marital wisdom, grace, and experience in this beautiful church today. And it's something for us to all behold. I'm sure as we begin this liturgy, you think back to your liturgy, that, that, first, that first liturgy in which you became one as husband and wife, wherever it was, however many years ago it was, today is a day to renew the I do and to affirm once again your love for each other, which is always centered in Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to this celebration, and I pray with you and for you that your love may continue to grow more and more. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to us today in word and in sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for all people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from the topmost branches tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. is good to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your loving mercy in the morning, and your truth in the watches of the night. just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord may will flourish in the courts of our God
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of his own accord the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for harvest time has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, It springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With my brother priests, Monsignor Sifrin, Father John Jarek, Father Jack Lavelle, Father Bob Cranach, and Father Matthews Willing, along with Father Michael Ballish, who's functioning as the Master of Ceremonies today, and our deacons, Deacon Randall Smith and Deacon Bob Friedman, I want to welcome you again to this joyous celebration. Over these last almost five months, well, it's been five months, five months yesterday, that I've been bishop here in Youngstown, I've had many firsts. And this is a very special first, being with all of you, celebrating this wedding anniversary mass. Uh, It's just so exciting 
to be with you and to celebrate your love. And um, as we uh, celebrate the longevity, the fidelity of your love, uh, there are a few couples that I would like to shine the spotlight on today. Uh, we have two couples who are celebrating their 70th anniversary. Um, that would be John and Mary Teresa Gabriel from Christ Our Savior Parish in Struthers. Could you please stand? And also celebrating 70 years are John and Marion Anderson from St. Robert in Cortland. Could you please stand? Thank you so much. And we also have two couples um, who have the unique privilege of being parents of a priest. Uh, the first couple is Mr. and Mrs. Jarek, the parents of uh, Father John Jarek. Could you please stand? Thank you so much. And we also, they're celebrating 65 years. And celebrating 40 years are Mr. and Mrs. Zwilling, the parents of Father Matthew Zwilling. Could you please stand? And I just want to thank all of you for your witness and your fidelity to love. There is a story of a young, engaged couple. They were walking along the beach one day, and at one point in their journey, they paused. And they sat down, they dipped their feet into the waters, and they peered their eyes out in the horizon, and they began to dream about their future together. And so in this dream, they entered a shop, and inside the shop there was a counter, and behind the counter there was an angel who asked, can I help you? Well, the bride was the more loquacious of the two, so she spoke up, and she said, yes, as a matter of fact, you can help us. We are getting married, and we would like a beautiful home with a two-car garage and a spacious backyard, fenced in preferably. We'd also like two healthy ch children, uh, a boy and a girl. We want harmony in our extended families, especially at holidays. We also want two successful jobs and an end to hung hunger and peace in the world. Well. Having heard that, the angel standing there behind the counter began to shake its wings. And finally, the angel looked into the bride's eyes and said, I'm sorry. And the bride was stunned, wondering what the angel was apologizing for. And so the angel looked at her and said, yes, I'm sorry, because we don't sell fruits here. We only sell seeds. Perhaps you and your spouse can relate to that story of this young couple anticipating marriage. There is a sense in which they wanted it all immediately, right away, like yesterday. And yet, love takes time. Marriage takes time. Family takes time. As the saying goes, Rome was not built in a day. Indeed, growth takes time. How good it is for us as a local church to gather today in this mother church of the diocese to celebrate marriage and the fruits of your many labors. The responsorial psalm refrain offers words to our shared prayer, Lord it is good to give thanks to you. 
We give thanks to God today for his grace that has allowed your love to grow and the seeds to sprout in a myriad of life-giving ways. And we offer this thanks in what is for us the greatest of prayers, the Holy Mass, which means thanksgiving. The, the gospel that we just heard places before us the beautiful image of the mustard seed, which is the tiniest of all seeds, and yet it grows into the largest of shrubs. This image speaks to the humble beginnings of love, which began in a word, a gaze, a look, or a simple touch. Now from that smallness, life and love abound. This fruitfulness not only manifests the depths of your commitment, but mirrors the kingdom and God's love for us. And just as the birds of the sky dwell in the shade of the mustard, sea, mustard tree, so many people stand in the shade of your love for each other. God knows that the journey has not always been easy or without pain. I think you understand so well now the vows you uttered on the day of your marriage that you promised to love each other in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health all the days of your life. Of course, what compounds the challenge of the journey is that there are no crystal balls that predict or forecast your life. It really becomes a faith walk with each other and God. And it also becomes an event where there is no scorekeeping. I'm sure you received a lot of gifts on your wedding day. But one thing you did not receive was a scorecard. From the moment you walk out of the church on the day of your wedding, you had no idea what awaited you. St. Paul captures this so well in the second reading today from his second letter to the Corinthians when he says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. The walk, no doubt, has taken you to the heights of the mountains and peak moments to the valleys of darkness and even despair. But here you are today, all dressed up in God's house, united as one, grateful for all that has been and hopeful for all that will be. And as a community of faith, you come together around God's altar to renew your love and recommit yourself to him and to each other. In a world that increasingly downplays and even diminishes the institution of marriage, I want to personally thank you for your witness and for living out this treasure with fidelity and truth. In February of 2014, Pope Francis spoke about marriage. He said, and I quote, marriage is an everyday task. I could say a craftsman's task, a goldsmith's work, because the husband has the duty of making the wife more of a woman, and the wife has the duty of making the husband more of a man growing also in humanity as man and woman. And this you do together. This is called growing together. This does not come out of thin air. The Lord blesses it, but it comes from your hands, from your attitudes, from your way of loving each other." End quote. My dear married couples, the work of marital love is endless. Just when you thought you have arrived,
there is more work to be done, more love to be shared, more seeds to be sprouted, and more fruits to behold. As you celebrate your love today, be assured of my prayers and support for you. With Jesus, I pray that as you continue your journey together amid all the seeds and fruits, you may always be grateful and one together. In other words, I pray that the prayer of Jesus, which is my Episcopal motto, is realized every day for you, that all may be one. God bless you. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was the heart of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection. Dear friends in Christ, on the anniversary of that celebration at which you joined your lives in an unbreakable bond through the sacrament of matrimony, you now intend to renew before the Lord the promises you made to one another. Turn to the Lord in prayer that these vows may be strengthened by divine grace. I invite you now to join your hands and renew your commitment before God and his church. Husbands, give praise to the Lord, for by his goodness you have taken this woman as your wife. Wives, give praise to the Lord, for by his goodness you have taken this man as your husband. Blessed are you, Lord, for in the good and the bad times of their lives you have stood lovingly by the sides of these couples. Help them, we pray, to remain faithful in their love for one another, so that they may be true witnesses in the covenant you have made with humankind. May the Lord keep you safe all the days of your life. May he be your comfort in adversity and your support in prosperity. May he fill your home with his blessings. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Let us now call upon the mercy of God, the Almighty Father, who in his provident plan willed that the history of salvation be signified in marital love and fidelity. Our response today will be, Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who are called faithful, requiring and rewarding the observance of your covenant, be pleased to fill with your blessings these your servants who celebrate the anniversary of their marriages. We pray to the Lord. 
Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit enjoy from eternity perfect oneness of life and communion of love, grant that these servants may always remember and faithfully keep the covenant of love they made in the sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who in your providence order all the experiences of human life so as to lead the faithful to share in the mystery of Christ, grant that these your servants, serenely accepting both good times and bad, may strive to cling to Christ and live for him alone. We pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who willed that the partnership of marriage should be an example of Christian living, grant that all married couples may be witnesses in the world to the mystery of your son's love. We pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. O God, in whose plan family life has its firm foundation, Hear with compassion the prayers of your servants and grant that following the example of the Holy Family, they may praise you without end in the joy of your house through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If we were at a wedding, this would now be the moment when there would be a nuptial blessing extended by the celebrant to the bride and groom. But this is a wedding anniversary mass, and so we have a special nuptial blessing for all of you. So at this time, I ask you to join your hands and lift up your hearts as we ask God's special blessing upon you. We praise you, O God. We bless you, creator of all things who in the beginning made man and woman, that they might form a communion of life and love. We also give you thanks for graciously blessing the family life of these couples, your servants, so that it might present an image of Christ's union with the church. Therefore, look with kindness upon them today, and as you sustained their communion amid the joys and struggles, renew their marriage covenant each day increase their charity, and strengthen in them the bond of peace, so that they may forever enjoy your blessing through Christ our Lord. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Understanding all the mysteries thereof, knowing everything, if I have faith in all its fullness to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing at all. Yeah. 
Let us pray. As the reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. A word of thanks to all who made this celebration possible. Of course, to Bishop Bonner, the priest with us today, Father Bollish, our Master of Ceremonies, Deacons uh, Bob Friedman and Randy Smith, to Dr. Dan Laguina and the Cathedral Music Ministry, and all the liturgical ministers, including those from Christ the Savior Parish in Strethers, organized by Rosie Holland. And I have to also thank uh, Sue Lipkovich, who takes care of a lot of the details when it comes to liturgy such as this. For couples who made arrangements with Jim Stickle Productions, photographs with Bishop Bonner will be taken after Mass in the Diocesan Conference Room. You may find the Diocesan Conference Room by exiting the cathedral through the side doors to your right. I will be out there momentarily to direct you to where the Diocesan Conference Room is. Last but not least, thanks to all the married couples gathered here. Today you are being living witnesses to the power of the sacrament of holy matrimony. Thank you. And I just want to say how much I have enjoyed praying with you and for you. Uh, in my family, when we reach milestones like this, um, usually we have a treat of some kind you know, chips or ice cream or cake. So I hope sometime today, if not today, this week, that you treat yourselves. Maybe even go out and have breakfast or have a nice dinner because you deserve it. Congratulations to you. Let's give it up for all these married people. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks. 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 Okay. 